Hey guys, and welcome back to Castle Crush, and today we are going to be talking about some of the things that you need to do if you are stuck in one castle to try and get to the next castle. Obviously card levels matter. We know card levels matter, and that is definitely a thing, and I'm sure that's what people are thinking right off the bat, and it's certainly something that I have uh, noticed. If your opponent has better card levels, higher level than you, then they're their cards are going to be stronger and that's going to be an advantage for them of course but there are a lot of other things that actually go into this as well and it's just in many ways like clash royale i mean like you have to understand what type of decks are people playing in your castle right what type of decks are they playing what are the meta decks and you need to go in there with a good deck if you're planning to if you're planning to punch above your weight in terms of your card levels, you have to be able to play a meta deck really, really well and understand it really, really well um, for whatever castle you are in. And basically, there's going to be different metas for different castles, especially the early ones. Um, it's a little different for leagues, I think, but for castles in particular, because you have access to different cards, there are going to be different metas. Now, of course, what can get confusing is the fact that people can drop down castles and then you can be playing people who have cards from higher castles. And while it does happen, it shouldn't be the majority of the people you face. Something else I would say is that you need to find a deck that works for you. Some people do not enjoy playing rushing decks and are really bad with timing, and if that is you, then do not play a rushing deck. But I will say that rushing decks do very much have the ability to punch above their weight. Mostly just in their ability, again, to beat people who have higher leveled cards than they do because rushing decks are really about timing and strategy. And although you can clear the cards if your opponent, you know, and you can get really unlucky with a rushing deck too. But if you play it really, really well over and over again and you're just a master with timing, you're going to beat people who have higher level cards than you and that's just how it is because but sometimes you're just going to lose to them and that is the advantage of a rushing deck um so i do think rushing decks are quite good especially if you're very good with timing but if you're not i wouldn't worry because you can still definitely do well even without one i think the other thing is that you really need to play with as few mistakes as possible if you're going to try and be above average and punch above your weight you have to play really well and you have to understand uh, which cards to play when in your strategy and also which cards to play against whatever card your opponent plays Because a lot of people seem to believe that the game just kind of rigs, you know, your opponents with impossible cards against you I'm saying, you know, sometimes you'll get really bad matchups But a lot of the time the matchups, you know, are just the problem is sort of amplified by the fact that people, you know they see a card and they don't know what to play against that card or they just don't play well in general so you know then they kind of feel like it was kind of an unfair matchup when sometimes there definitely have there have definitely been matches where i thought i was you know up against an impossible push from my opponent but i did manage to actually clear it in the end because i looked at what they played and i looked at the cards i had and i just focused on trying to counter each part of what they played and sometimes, you know, a really big push from your opponent can be very intimidating, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to lose the match. Um, you just have to kind of stay composed and play the right cards in the right order. And obviously, if you don't have the card levels in your favor, then that's going to be a problem. But I do think that there are certain, there are certain decks that focus more around not needing card levels as much, and... I think it's good to sort of look for those types of decks and try to focus on those. And I already mentioned one, which is a rushing deck, because if you time your rushing decks well and outsmart your opponent with your standard bearers and other cards like, you can really, um, you know, you can really win some matches that you probably shouldn't be winning uh, just from, you know, the skill of the timing. So the other thing I was going to say was there are certain cards, spell cards, like Blizzard. Blizzard is also about, like, timing. It's also about timing. It's another thing where, you know, there's a skill aspect in play there about where you play your Blizzard. Uh, other cards, for example, Black Witch. You know, when do you play your Black Witch? Do you play it at the right moment against the right 
push from your opponent. That's going to have a huge impact on whether or not you can win that game. Another thing would be combos. You have to land your combos really, really well. And the Black Witch combo, if you're going to use Black Witch in Inferno, you have to land that, you know, really, really well. Um, if you're going to use a Valkyrie, you have to be able to follow it up or prevent it from getting destroyed immediately. Uh, there's so many cards. If you want to use Metamorph, you have to be able to Metamorph at the right time to, you know, avoid getting a bad Metamorph, or at least increase your odds of getting a good Metamorph, right? There is skill there. If you play your Metamorph constantly into bad situations, then you're not really helping yourself at all. Whereas if you play it at the right time, you're going to optimize, you know, the chances that you will get a good Metamorph. I think the next tip is that you have to be prepared for any situation. I read so many reviews where people were like, just because they didn't get this particular card, you know, right off the, in their initial draw, that the game was like cheating them, and you know, just because it didn't give them their low mana cards first, you know, the game is cheating them, and you know, I... I just really think that you have to understand the game is giving you the cards theoretically in a random order from the cards you put in your deck and it can give, you know, just like anything that's random, sometimes you're going to get all of the high mana cards or all of the low mana cards together. That doesn't necessarily mean you've lost the match. It depends on how you have your deck set up. And honestly, you should have your deck set up in a way such that, you know, only very occasionally are you going to get a really bad draw. I mean, if you're consistently getting terrible draws, it's probably that you have your deck set up badly, and that you need to change cards in your deck to try and get a more balanced starting hand. And I've had lots of decks I've created from scratch that are like that, where I just get really bad starting hands over and over again, but it usually has to do with not having enough troop cards um, in the deck or not having enough, you know, or my average mana cost is too high in my deck and, you know, you need to go in and adjust. That would be a big tip. You have to adjust your deck, especially if you're not someone who has been playing with that deck for a long time or knows that it's a good deck. Um, if you're new to building decks, you definitely want to ad adjust your deck a lot. Um, and try to figure out what are the problems. What problem do you most run into? Are you running into a problem where you have too high of a mana cost or... But the real point of this video was just to say that it's important to control what you can control in the match. You can't control your card levels, but you can control the timing of the cards that you play, you know, playing the right counters to certain cards and playing these skill-based cards or timing-based cards like Blizzard or Standard Bearer the best that you possibly can play them in order to win the match. So that's going to do it for this quick set of tips here. So leave a like if you enjoyed, let me know what you thought about this video in the comments and what other types of videos I should create. Maybe subscribe if you're new to the channel. And thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for more videos.